Welcome back to Microbiology. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a little bit of the theory and the results underlying the urease test, sometimes called the urea hydrolysis test. So first of all, let's look at this reaction right here. This is actually a reaction you do need to know for the class, so you do not need to know chemical structures for this purpose. But over here, this is the molecule urea. Okay. Um, urea is normally a metabolic waste product. It's a waste product in bacteria. It's actually a waste product in humans. Now, humans do not have this enzyme, but some bacteria do. They have an enzyme called urease, and considering this is um, an isolated enzyme, I've put it in blue here, this is an enzyme that you do need to know for exams. Okay, That's going to be coming up in a couple of weeks. So, know this enzyme. What this enzyme urease does is it performs urea hydrolysis, thus the name of the test. It's going to use water, H2O, to break apart urea. And what you're essentially going to get out of it is carbon dioxide and two molecules of ammonia. Ammonia has the chemical formula NH3. Now, the carbon dioxide we really don't care about. But let's suppose urease is present and it breaks urea down into these molecules of ammonia. Ammonia itself is a base. Okay, ammonia is an alkaline substance, okay, which means it's going to elevate the pH of the broth. Okay, because this, this test occurs in broth. So if you've got ammonia present, then you would expect the pH of the broth to increase. Okay, And so if you have a higher pH, that means you've got this enzyme. But what we do to visualize it is we put in a pH indicator. This is made into the broth. The pH indicator is the same that we saw in triple sugar iron agar. It's the same in carbohydrate fermentation. It's the pH indicator phenol red. Phenol red, that is something you should know. And when phenol red's pH goes up, when it goes up, phenol red turns a pink color. Okay, so here's an important point. Increasing pH, which occurs with the ammonia present, it changes the color from a yellow to pink or red, which is what we see in the middle here. And so after you pull your urea test out of the incubators and you look at it and it's pink, that means you have urease present because that's causing the buildup of ammonia, which raises the pH and turns the indicator phenol red pink. So here is the bottom line. If you have a reddish pink, anywhere in the reddish pink spectrum, normally it's going to be a color close to this, um, then it's going to be urease positive. Okay. Now you see over here on the left and the right, um, we've got a yellow and orange. Okay, um, These are both considered negative if you see this. Now, usually when it's uninoculated, um, sometimes it'll actually turn yellow. Um, but actually, you can have either this yellow or orange come out and that would be negative. Okay, So the key here is that only if it's pink, pinkish red, it's urease positive. If it's orange or yellow, those are not pink. So anything in that range, I mean, because the color can vary a little bit, orange or yellow on the left or right, that's going to be urease negative. All right, so now that we've covered the urease test and hopefully you have a good understanding of that, I want to mention something about the tests for this week that can help you in your studies. All right, so if you're at a different school or do, looking at this in another context, this may be irrelevant for you. But we covered four tests this week. We covered McConkie agar, carbohydrate fermentation, triple sugar iron, and of course the urease test. Now, they all four have a pH indicator. And the pH indicator is pretty much almost the same for all of them. Remember for McConkie agar, the pH indicator was neutral red, but for all the others, Carbohydrate fermentation, triple sugar iron, TSI, and urease, those three were phenol red. So every one of your pH indicators this week ends in red. The first one for McConkie was neutral red, but this one, this one, and this one were all phenol red. So actually the reason they designed the labs like that is actually to help you when you're studying. It's because they all have a similar pH indicator. Okay, um, And the major things from this unit that I'd like you to know would be obviously the results. You need to be able to interpret the results. That's going to be the majority of the test. But also you do need to uh, concern yourself with some of the enzymes. For example, 
Uh, this one is the only one from this week that I know of, so we just have urease. That's the major enzyme to know, but also knowing those pH indicators. McConkey is neutral red. All other three this week, including urea hydrolysis, are phenol red. All right, so please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.